Now, looking back over 2022, the one thing that's got me more excited than anything else is this. Taking photographs with my mobile phone. I am blown away, not just by the quality of the files this thing produces, but also the incredibly easy and seamless editing workflow. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I captured this image on my iPhone and ended up with this incredible print. Now, I remember a time not that long ago when I kind of dismissed taking photographs with my mobile phone as just a nice to have, just something for taking those quick grab shots, but definitely nothing serious, nothing planned. But that has totally changed. Just over 15 years later from when the iPhone was first released and smartphones became a thing, the quality of the files modern smartphones like my iPhone and other phones like the Google Pixel 7 can produce is mind-blowingly good, way better than my first ever DSLR and Nikon D200. But combine that with the mobile workflow we now have, this is all getting very exciting. And best of all, it's something for everyone to enjoy. So let's take a look then at what I did to end up with this image. And we'll split this video into three parts. The kit, how I took the photographs, and the editing and mobile workflow. First of all, let's look at the kit. There's my mobile phone, and I'm currently using an iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now, most of the time you could hand hold your phone when taking photographs, but I'm really enjoying taking long exposures, especially when on the coast. So for that, I have my phone on a tripod. To do this, I use the small rig universal holder, and I've attached a couple of Arca Swiss plates on mine, one on a short side and one on a long side. This way I can fit it into the ball head on my tripod and easily rotate the phone to be vertical or horizontal. Now when it comes to taking the photographs, I'm using the camera function built into the Lightroom mobile app. This has lots of additional functions which I'll cover in another video, but for long exposure, I just choose it from the menu at the bottom and I can adjust the length of the long exposure by dragging this slider back and forth. Now, if you don't see that option, I've added a link in the description to a YouTube short video that shows how you can get it. The maximum length of time you can set for the long exposure is five seconds, but I've found that the sweet spot for capturing waves is just half a second. This option in the Lightroom app is only available for iOS at the moment, so if you have an Android device, you'll need to use another app like Slow Shutter Cam, but there's plenty of others out there. I do sometimes use the timer so that there's no movement in the phone when taking the photographs, but to be honest, you only have to tap very gently anyway, so rarely, if ever, do I see any movement. I then just keep on tapping away, taking more photographs to capture the different waves and the different motion in the sea. Now, the thing I really love about this is how every photograph I take automatically syncs with every other device I have Lightroom Mobile installed on, and they sync with Lightroom CC on my desktop. But more of that in a moment. I can then go and grab a coffee at a local cafe, look at them on my phone and start editing if I want to, or grab my iPad out of my bag and look through and edit them on a bigger screen. When I get back home and I'm on my main computer, when I open up Lightroom CC, all of the photographs are there, and so are all of the edits I've done in the cafe, so I can tweak them if I want, or just carry on from where I left off. So now I'm back home from the cafe and sat in front of my computer, even though I could now carry on and use Lightroom CC because everything is synced there, let's just carry on and use the iPad and go through the complete mobile workflow using Lightroom Mobile and Photoshop on the iPad. So here on my iPad is the image I've edited up to this point, and here are four other images I shot at the same time that have different waves and motion in the sea. I've created a folder and added all five of these images into it to keep everything organized. For now though, now that I've edited one image, I want to apply the same edits to the other four, because I'm going to blend parts of them together to create one final image that has the best waves and the best motion in the sea. Now doing this is personal choice, you don't have to do it, but I want to create one final image 
that looks as dramatic as what it felt like when I was there. To apply the edits onto the other images, I'm going to make a preset. So I click on the image that I've already edited. Then I tap on the presets icon. And then the three dots, the ellipsis, in the top right and choose the Create Preset option. I give the preset a name. I'll call this one Lighthouse at Sunrise. We can see that this will be saved in the User Presets group. Then underneath, I choose which of the settings I want to save within the preset. Obviously, I want to include all of them, so I simply put a tick in each of the checkboxes. For the masking, if I tick the checkbox and then expand it, we can see that all of the masks are included. I can, of course, untick any of the masks if I don't want to include them. For this, though, I want them all. Then I click on the tick to save the preset and then press Done. To apply the preset to each of the remaining four images, I then tap to open each one and then open the preset section. I find the preset I made and then tap on it to apply it and press Done. And I'll do this for the remaining images. Now to blend parts of each of the images together, we need to use Photoshop. And ideally, what would be great to happen is that we can send all five images into Photoshop so that they open in the same tab with one above the other in the layer stack. At the time of making this video, that isn't possible in Lightroom Mobile or Lightroom CC. For the mobile workflow on the iPad though, there is a simple workaround. What I will do is to select the four images I've just applied the preset to. I do that by tapping on the three dots, the ellipsis, and choosing Select Photos. I'll then tap on each of the four to select them. Then from the bottom of the screen, I'll choose the Share option and Export to Files. I'll export them directly onto my iPad in a folder I've added called From Lightroom. So I tap on it and then tap Save. Then I'll open my main image and then choose Edit in Photoshop. Now the reason I've done it this way rather than exporting all those five images into the folder and then opening them all up in Photoshop on the iPad is that by doing it this way, when I've finished editing in Photoshop and send it back into Lightroom, everything I've done syncs across every device. Let me show you what I mean. So now we're in Photoshop on the iPad. To start blending the other images, I just add them in by clicking on the plus icon. Then choose Files. I navigate to the folder containing the four images and tap on one of them. And when I do that, it adds it in and I tap Done. This has now placed that image in the layer stack above the original. And you can see that here if I turn the eye icon, the visibility, on and off. Now I just need to blend in the part of this layer that I want. And the bit I'll go for is this area just here. So I now need to add a black layer mask to hide the contents of this layer so that I can then use a white brush to reveal the bits that I want. To do this, I first of all tap to add a layer mask. Then I set my foreground color to black. Now keyboard shortcuts are exactly the same as on the desktop version of Photoshop. So by pressing D, I can set the foreground and background to their default colors of black and white. And by pressing X, I can swap between the foreground and the background colors. So I set my foreground color to black and then use it to fill the layer mask by pressing the Option and Delete keys on the iPad keyboard. You can see now that the contents of the layer are hidden. I then use a white soft brush and brush over to reveal the part of the layer that I want. Now there are lots of keyboard shortcuts available. To see them all, just tap on the question mark and choose Keyboard Shortcuts. So now I simply repeat these steps to add the other parts I want from the remaining images. I tap on the plus icon, choose Files, navigate to the folder on my iPad, and then tap on the next image, and then tap Done. I add a layer mask, I set the foreground color to black, and I fill the layer mask with the black foreground color. I then use a white brush 
to reveal the part or parts that I want. So now that you know the process for bringing the images in and doing the masking, I'll quickly speed through this bit to get the rest of that part done. So now I've finished blending the images together, I just tap Send to Lightroom. And here's the image now in Lightroom Mobile. To finish it off, I'll first of all do a black and white conversion. So I'll go to Presets, and then the Premium section. I'll choose black and white, and go for the BW09, which I really like and then I'll tap Done. Lastly, I'll go to the Masking section, I'll tap to add a mask, and choose Radial Gradient. I'll drag it out in the center area just here. Then I'll go to the Light section, and increase the exposure just a little. This I find really draws the attention of the viewer right into the photograph. And then I tap Done. Now the real magic here is that everything I've done has now synced with Lightroom CC, Lightroom Classic, and Lightroom Mobile on every device that I have it installed on. And it does that without me doing anything. It just happens. So now in Lightroom Classic, I can open the image up and make any minor adjustments necessary before printing it out. And this here is the original image that I edited all on my iPad and printed out. Now, one thing I did once the actual file had synced across Lightroom CC and Lightroom Classic, I just quickly dived in and changed the perspective of the lighthouse a little bit there. It just looked like it was leaning just a little bit, and it was really easy to do on the desktop rather than in the iPad. But that's just a real small thing. But, you know, all of this stuff really, really excites me, especially with all the, the updates that are coming in for the phones and with the apps as well. I haven't been this excited about photography in a very, very long time. But hey, that's all for this video. So as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, just click on that subscribe button because it's just a great free way that you can support this channel. And I really do appreciate all the likes and all the comments that come in. But for now, that's me. I'm done. I'll see you in the next video.